Hey my squidlings, Katie here. Welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to be doing another review on some Arteza art supplies. So I've done quite a few and if you want to uh, see some other Arteza art supplies I've reviewed, I will have some links up on the screen. But for now, I'm going to be taking a look at the 48 set of real brush pens by Arteza and then I'm also going to be using their water brush pens uh, that come in the red set that have like the little button on the side. Uh, so I cannot wait to get into these. Uh, I do want to let you guys know that if you want to check any of these supplies out, I will have links down in the description below to where you can do so, as well as a link to Arteza's website so you can just go check them out. Before we get into the review though, I want to let you guys know that I am hosting a 30% off everything in my store from now until July 31st. So if you want to get some discounted goodies, go head over to my store. There will be a link on the screen. All right, so without further ado, uh, let's talk about these products a little bit. So the Arteza Real Brush Pens are exactly how they sound. They come in a plastic container and then they seem to have four different trays. So let's get these trays out. And then they are organized by color. Um, I'm just going to take one of these out so we can kind of get a look at the marker itself. So on the marker, it has the Arteza labeling. It says real brush pen, and then it has the color name and I assume number of the marker. Uh, it has the color on the tip, and then it has a plastic cap. If you take the cap off, uh, you can see the color here. I'm going to zoom in just a little bit to kind of show you that this actually has real bristles it's not like one of those felt tips so it has real bristles so i have a piece of watercolor paper here and basically these are water-based markers um you can get you know really thin lines or thick lines and the faster you go the more broken your line will be so if you go really slow you're gonna have a really nice thick line but if you go quick you're gonna have broken lines Another feature that is, you know, specific to these kind of things uh, is something that goes along with these water brushes. So I'm going to get these out of the package real quick and then I'm going to talk about that. Alright, I have some water here in this water brush. So basically what you should be able to do is dissolve this into a lighter color just to get like a watercolor wash and it's working pretty well. Another thing you can do is blend these markers together. So if you take a darker marker and you scribble it out, you can take a lighter marker like this and go right over the top and bring it down and it will blend it. You may have to go over it a little bit. And lastly, another thing you can do is something called the tip to tip method. And you are going to hold the darker marker over the top of the lighter colored marker and touch the tips together. Hold it for a little bit so it can transfer and then you'll just want to color. And again it gives you a blend from this color to this color. And of course you can darken it up as you see fit. So now that we've talked about these, let's zoom out and talk about the water brushes. So in the set I got six different water brushes and they range from a large flat. There is a smaller flat that seems to be a little disheveled but um, I think once I put water in this it'll even itself out. And then there is a tiny flat brush which seems uh, in good working order. And then there are three round brushes so there's the one I was just using which is a large round. And there are a couple of smaller rounds. So there's this one. And then lastly, there is a teeny tiny round brush. So all in all, you get really good variety in this set. And I notice the plastic on this is really thick and durable. And right here is where you push. This It's a little softer to push right here than the rest of the plastic, which I find is nice. Um, and it unscrews counterclockwise. Most of my regular brush prints unscrew clockwise which is kind of weird for me but um anyway 
yeah these are really nice and I cannot wait to use them again I have water already in this one they fill up really easily basically all you want to do is unscrew it fill up this reservoir right here and then re-screw it and then of course you'll want to prime the paint brush by squeezing out some water into it so the water can flow one thing I did notice with this though and I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see it is if I squeeze this too hard it starts leaking like crazy so it is something you want to be aware of anyway I'm gonna take these supplies I'm gonna go test them out swatch them and then head into an illustration where I'm gonna talk to you further about these art supplies pros cons and all that stuff I know everybody and their mother has reviewed these already but I'm just honored that they sent these to me to review and I just want to talk to you about them. So uh, let's head over into that and get started. All right, now we are getting onto the swatches. So I'm using Arteza watercolor paper. I found this paper works the best for um, like getting the watercolor effects with the markers. I tried a few different watercolor papers and each one kind of um, works differently with these. So I would for sure test. I found the best... Um, reaction time not reaction time I found the best like way it reacts is with cold press paper but it still will work with hot press paper but I recommend that if you get these I would try them out on whatever paper you're using they do work really well with the Arteza branded paper which really is no surprise but um also they once they dry they don't re-wet as well so if you're wanting to get some really good watercolor effects I would recommend one of two things one of them is to immediately do what I'm doing here and like blend them out. The other thing I would recommend is to get a scrap piece of plastic or maybe a piece of plastic from some kind of packaging, scribble your marker onto that and then pick it up with a water brush. You will see me do that a lot in this video on the second speed paint. So um, it is something that's really viable and it's something that I really like to do just because you can kind of dilute colors if they're a little too strong for you. Um, but you can also get better blends and stuff like that. I really like the color selection of this set. They come with a lot of colors and I think the 48 set is a really good set just to get like your base colors and stuff. So now I'm on to the squid test which is where I draw squid and I test the art supplies on the squid. So for the majority of the squid what I'm doing is I'm taking a dark marker and then I am using a lighter marker to blend the darker marker out. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, it's basically what I'm doing right now. Uh, in some areas, I will take the dark marker and blend it out with the Arteza water brush, but for the most part, I just wanted to test these real brush pens out by themselves and kind of let them speak for themselves a little bit because you can use these in so many different ways. You can use them by themselves. You can use them in conjunction with like a paintbrush or, you know, a water brush or something. Um, so I think that they're really versatile, which is really nice. Um, and I found that with the squid, I got some really cool blendy effects and I really like how it came out. It's... This review was supposed to come out a while ago, so I did do the squid a while ago, but it was really fun. Also, I am lining the squid with these. They're not super great for lining, but if you've got a really steady hand, um, they're really good for that. So, yeah, I think they're really nice. Again, I don't have the steadiest of hands, so you might see me having to go back over a couple spots a few times, but that's okay. So we are about to get on to the final illustration. So this is the final piece and I scribbled some of the markers onto a piece of plastic and I'm actually picking it up with a water brush just to get some base layers down. And a lot of this painting is me doing that just because again, like I said earlier, I can dilute colors. I can kind of control how much paint goes where if that makes any sense. I think one of the biggest pros for me with the real brush markers is the fact that they're really convenient. You know, you get pretty much watercolor paint in a pen style, and again, you can dilute them with a water brush or a paintbrush with water or something like that, but you can also just use them by themselves, and they're really easy to just take around with you because they're not really that big, um, and they seem to have a lot of ink in them. They are a little longer than the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Pens, which are pretty much the on-brand version of these. But I find that, again, they have more ink, and I actually like the tips of these a lot more. I don't know. I feel like they have a little bit more spring. Um, and plus, they come in, you know, a relatively affordable set. Um, the set really isn't that expensive, and they also have other sets like the 96 set. I believe they have a 12 set and a 24 set as well. 
I do eventually plan on testing the light fastness of these. I don't really have high hopes because I do believe they use a dye-based ink. But you know what? I could be surprised. I've been surprised about art supplies before, so I will be testing this, so no worries about that. One thing I do find is quite, not annoying, but sad is the fact that these do not come in open stock as far as I know, so if you do run out of your favorite color, you may have to improvise by mixing other colors or even buying the set. Again, I really wouldn't recommend buying a whole set just for one color, but if that's what you want to do, you do you. One of the biggest cons I find with these is the fact that some of the bristles and um, just the hairs in general sometimes can be splayed, but that can be really easily fixed uh, by taking the offending bristle and pulling it out a little bit, like, towards you and then just snipping it off. I also found that some of these did shed. It's the first time I've ever had anything shed on me and I was like, what the heck? But it was the very tip of one. I noticed it was really long, so I kind of like tugged at it and it just came right out. Uh, really no force necessary. So um, if you find one that's a little longer than the rest of them, just pull it out. It's not going to like destroy your brush pen. It just makes it more even, honestly. Another thing I want to talk about is something that I just want you to be mindful of. If you don't let these dry completely and you go over them with maybe another um, layer of water or you try to blend some more colors out and they're just barely wet, it will start to make a blurred effect and cause it to kind of bleed into places you may not want it to. Um, maybe it was just the paper I was using, but I found that happened a lot on this piece. So you want to make sure your layers are completely dry before you add other layers. And even then they still may lift up a little bit, so that is something you want to be aware of. But anyway, um, I found that I really enjoyed these. I had a super, super huge amount of fun just playing with them. As you can tell, the piece I made is very, like, messy, I guess? That's what you would call it? I don't really know. It was just really fun to throw colors around and uh, have fun. And I wanted to do, like, a grayscale piece and then have, like, the red for the blood or whatever. And it ended up turning out a little differently than I thought because some of the red ended up mixing in with some of the gray. But I really liked how it turned out, so I'm not really that upset about it. Now, I don't really have that much to say about the water brushes themselves, just because it is a water brush and it's kind of, I don't know, it's not something that like I need to do a whole review on, that's kind of why I mashed it in here. But, um, I do want to talk about them a little bit, so... They are really nice, and I will go ahead and tell you that I have since thrown away all my other water brushes <laughs> because I love these so much. I really just love how sturdy they are. All the caps and the plastic feels really sturdy, and I like the little push button. Now, earlier in the video, I noted that it was leaky. Well, if I had thought about it a little bit, and I know now, um, it, it was my fault that they were so leaky. So it's kind of like... Um, I don't know how to explain it. When you push it, it's not like a button that you press to release some water. What it does is it sends like air into the reservoir, which pushes the water down. Ooh, super scientific. Uh, and it, you know, pushes the water out into the brush. But I was pushing it really vigorously and so water was going everywhere. Well, if you have a gentle touch and you just kind of barely press it, water keeps flowing into it and it's very nice and it's right at like the thumb level so you don't even really have to think about it when you press the button. Another thing, uh, I really like the tips on these. They have a fantastic spring back. Now, one thing to note is water brushes don't last forever. These are eventually going to break down. They're going to lose their spring. Um, and I'm grateful for my old ones, but I'm super happy to have these new ones. So um, that's why I replaced them because they're just so nice. They hold water so well, and so same with paint. Um, I just feel like I can paint forever with them. I don't know. And the water flow is so nice. Like, again, as long as you're not super crazy with pushing that button, there's no crazy water flow. I was lying. They ain't leaky. It was just me. <laughs> but anyway, um, I love these water brushes. Again, they are a fantastic addition to my current water brush selection, which is pretty much now all Arteza products. But I'm not upset by that because, again, I really enjoy them. So, um, yeah, like I said, there's not much to say about them. I really like them. They have a nice spring. They work really well. Also, if you get these, do not be surprised if they get stained. They're white. You're going to use staining paints. They're going to get stained. It does not affect the integrity of the uh, water brushes. It may seem gross, but as long as you wipe it off and make sure to, you know, clean your brush, it's perfectly fine. So anyway, yeah, that's all I have to say about those. 
And both of these products, as far as the water brushes and the real brush pins, are really inexpensive. So the water brush pins for this set that I'm currently reviewing is $15, pretty much. Um, they have a couple of other sets. They have one assorted set of four, which is about $11, and they have another type of a six set, and that is also $15. So uh, they're really affordable, especially because you get six paintbrushes, and uh, they hold water, and these will last you a really long time. And then as far as the affordability of the real brush pins, they range between $15 and $67. I think they're really affordable, especially because... Um, Different brands are a lot more expensive. I would recommend at least checking them out if you want to. Um, again, I really enjoyed these and I hope to have a lot more fun using them in the future because my goodness did I have fun with this piece and I created something I'm super happy with, so that's always a good thing. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's a little longer than normal, but I hope you found it informative. I hope that... Uh, I don't know, it helped you decide on something, or if not, I hope you just found the video enjoyable. If you aren't already and you want to be a part of our adorable squid pod, there is a subscribe button down below and a little button next to it that has a bell on it, and if you click the bell button, you get notified on when I upload new videos. Also, don't forget, I have social media in the links down below. Please follow me there, and until next time, my adorable squidlings, toodaloo!